So I thought I'd do a little video about why most white people don't speak out against racism. This video was inspired by someone who I respect who posted a Facebook status the other day. He said, how come all the other white people don't go so hard on the bad racist white people? You know, something comparable to how black people work hard to debate any of the bad black people who are simply frustrated with white racism and oppression. Why don't white people speak out against their own like we do? So I'm going to try to answer that to my best ability, mainly because motherfuckers go on the path of least resistance, you feel me? People tend to seek pleasure and avoid pain. That's like law number one. We do things that we're rewarded for and we avoid things that we're punished for. And in order for white supremacy to survive, people who are for white supremacy are going to be rewarded. People who are against white supremacy are going to be punished. So for anyone who speaks in favor of white people, they get rewarded. For anyone who speaks out against white people, they get punished. And it doesn't matter what the race is of the person doing this talking. You know, it could be a white person speaking for or against white people, black person speaking for or against white people. Either way, the way you get treated depends on what your response is and what you're saying. Basic math. Take, for example, a black person who speaks out against black people. You know, this goes way back to slavery, those who lived in the house versus those who lived in the field, whatnot. You know, nowadays it's usually black conservatives, quote unquote, they say, who will point the finger at other black folks and say, okay, you're the problem. You know what I'm saying? We're the problem. We're fucking up. That's why we're in the condition we're in. They shift the blame from white supremacy to a supposed black moral or cultural inferiority. And of course, white folks buy this shit. You know what I'm saying? They laugh that shit up because it supports some of their ingrained racist beliefs. He helps them sleep at night. He either, he either justifies their racist beliefs that they already had, or he helps them maintain their illusion that racism is over and that, you know, there are no racially based limits to your success in this world. And therefore, any failings you have on your part are based on your own failings, you know, not a system of oppression. He might get called a sellout or a Uncle Tom by other black people, but that doesn't really matter because they don't hold the power, you know? They're not the ones who can actually hold him accountable. It's usually going to be a white person who's signing his paycheck at the end of the day. It's a white person who decides whether he gets promoted or not, whether he even has a job or not, nine times out of ten. A lot of these dudes even have careers just speaking out against other black folks, you know what I'm saying? Because white people will pull them out. Whenever, you know, something happens, they want to blame on white people, well, pull out the black conservatives. All right, so that's one side of it. Other side is white people who speak for the interest and for the benefit of black folks and what happens with us. Most white people in this country either feel they have an interest in maintaining white supremacy or at minimum, you know, in not opposing it. Because when white people do take a stand, we get ostracized for it. And if you haven't seen that happen, it's probably just because White folks who speak out in the interest of black people rarely make it on TV. We don't get called in for the interviews. You know, sure, you got some white folks who will proclaim colorblind beliefs. You know, they say we're not racist on Martin Luther King Day. They all get around and sing Kumbaya, which is great. I'm not knocking that. But what I'm saying is when it comes to actually challenging white supremacy in a real way or pointing out systemic injustices in this country, suddenly they're not around. Suddenly they don't want to speak about it. They they opt out of the conversation Most white folks, you know, or it, when they do go hard, they go hard on historical injustices They they go hard on slavery. They go Hard on Jim Crow, you know, what I'm saying segregation, but they don't go hard on current systemic injustice Only time they speak out against what's happening right now is when they're going against extremists, you know, what I'm saying Donald Sterling They'll throw him under the bus the KKK, neo-Nazi skinheads, all that shit, they'll throw them under the bus. But all these people who subconsciously support white supremacy without even realizing it, they're left untouched. They always come to the defense, making excuses for them. And also the media always portrays this whole thing as a black problem as well. You know, not, not taking into account the fact that the race problem in this country is actually a white problem. Because white people, for the most part, are holding the strings that actually keep the shit perpetuated. And anyone who identifies too closely with blacks, we get written off, you know what I'm saying, laughed at, looked out as clowns. They come up with words. Back in the day, it was, you know, N-word lover. You know, they, they call us wiggers, you know, all, all these different words they have to dismiss and shut down, basically, white folks who get too close to black folks. And it's funny, because on one hand, 
you'll see the white saviorism mentality. You know, they got these movies coming out where it's all like the white people helping out the poor black people, you know, this paternalistic idea we have. But but that's a fictionalized version. The actual white folks who really put themselves on the line and, and died for this shit, you never hear them mentioned. They don't talk about them in Black History Month. They don't talk about it when they're talking about the civil rights movement. They don't talk about John Brown. You know what I'm saying? Hell, I can't even name most of the white activists from the past. And me being who I am, I should know. Most of us don't even know because it's hard. You gotta dig deep to find that shit. And I'll tell you why. It's because they don't want us to see that. They don't want us to identify with that. They don't want us to see that as an option for us. If we look at it like black folks stand up for black folks, white folks, all we have to do is just quote unquote, not be racist, uh, you know, and just go about li living our lives in comfort. Well, this is what happened. Black folks get the impression that we don't care. They get the impression that white folks just don't give a fuck because of what they go through every day and what we continuously fail to acknowledge. Or even if we do acknowledge, we fail to do anything about it or speak out actively against it. And then white folks, because we don't see other white folks standing up for it, we get the impression that it's not our battle. We're not told the story that it's our battle. You know, the, and the cycle just keeps continuing, continuing on and on. Hell, I've even got people close to me, people who I know are not racist in their heart, who preach humanitarian values, all, all this shit. They've told me this is not my battle. Why are you fighting this? People I know and love. And when otherwise well-meaning white folks tell me that this isn't my fight, I ask you a question. Why the fuck isn't it yours? How about that? Think about that.